It's going to be awesome today. A lot of things are happening around the world. And for us that we call ourselves intentional parent, it is very important for us to address these things. And that is why I am not here alone today. That is why I'm not doing this alone today. Uh -uh. I'm bringing my mamas on board. See, these two people, and it's going to be three. We are blessed to have three. One of them is sacrificing the time because she's also having another time. I think it's... I couldn't believe she'd be done. Please let's all mute ourselves on Please let's be muted. It's going to help us a lot. Thank you very much. Mommy yeah, Pat is here. Thank yeah. you for joining, Mommy Pat. God bless you. God bless you. I know it's a very busy day for you. And that is why I wanted to just be, but for joining, I appreciate it a lot. Thank you so much, Mommy Pat. So we are not just having two of my mamas today, we are having three of them. So it's going to be an awesome time and they are going to be talking to us all. Sorry, please, what's that? I'm adding. I'm adding, <laughs> maybe the next one. I'm adding. People are waiting, sorry. Okay, so we want to talk about the root cause. A lot is happening about parenting. And even about this program, I got a lot of questions like, can men join? Can men be part of it? When we talk about parenting, it's not about moms only. It's not about, hey, my darling friend is right there all the way from Cameroon, the lady evangelist. Yes, mama. <laughs> that you, God bless you, Mama Ethan. God bless all right, you, too, uh, Mommy Shola is here. Mommy Pat is here. Mommy Tolu is here. See, these three people are very important people in my life. They are very, very important people in my life. And they are people that I don't joke with. They are my mentor. And, uh, you know, when I have to bring them all on board today, you should know that it's a big day. It's really a big day. And uh, we should know, see, I have my diary here. And we advise you to do the same, get your pen, because every of the award is going to be very important. It matters. It's, it's going to be an, an important point. I'm going to start from Mommy Tolu. When I came to Qatar newly in 2010, when I met Mommy Tolu, one thing I said to myself, I said, eh, hey, when I have my children, everything I've seen and heard from her, I'm going to implement it. She was one of the people I can say in my life that uh, have a very positive impact in my life. She might not know this. You know, the way she was composing herself, the way she was talking, I was like, ah, ah. Hey, Oluwao, oh yeah, wake up, wake up. You know, I was able to learn a lot from Mommy Tolu, a lot, the way she speaks. Uh, even last week, I was still talking to myself, oh, when will you start speaking like Mommy Tolu? <laughs> when, when will you start speaking like Mommy Tolu? So I'm very happy to have you here, Mom. It, it, it really means a lot to me. I'm not taking your time for granted. And you've really imparted my life positively, and you're still imparting my life. So it's a great honor for me to be having you here today. And I remember when I had the twins and you came over to check me in the house. Say, oh yeah, you don't have to wait. Don't wait. Start the tracking. Check their height. Check their hearing. Check the I said, oh yes. Oh yes. That's what I'm talking about. So she was always on point to, you know, the, the signal was so loud. She was there. She didn't even wait. Oh yeah, are you tracking them? See, it's, she told me, I said to God, my children must not be shot. They have to be taught. They have to, you don't wait. You declare the word. You pray. I say, yes, yeah, very good. This is who I need. I, I needed that at that particular time. And God helped me. I was able to take all the advices, the, the, your pattern, and it really helped. And I can say boldly that it's working for me. And that's why I really want to bring you on today. And don't forget, you are still going to be on Facebook Live by the grace of God next month because I really want everyone to hear you speak. Because by the grace of God, you have raised your children. And I can say boldly, they are worthy of emulation. And also, I'm going to quickly talk about Mamishola. I met Mamishola about 20 years ago at the university. At that point, she was our sister coordinator. Mommy, I know you are there. Mamishola, please let your camera be on. Maybe you are doing some setting. Pauline, I've been sighted there. The Kinomo. Hey! <laughs> My mamas are here today. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Mommy. God bless you. So uh, uh, that was 20 years ago at the university. She was the sister court, and I like the coordination, the, the you know, the, res the step respect. I'm like, oh, when I grow up, I will be like that. She will tell us, you don't have to look rough. 
you are worshiping God and praising God, and all your nails like you know, even like presentable and everything. I'm like, ah, I better glue to those presses. And by the grace of God, 20 years after, she's still my mother, and I'm glad to have her. Another person that I'm very privileged to be having today is Mommy Park. I know she's very busy today, they have a program in church today, and that is why she's not on flyer because I thought she wouldn't be able to make it. However, she's here with us at this moment. Mommy me. She's one of the persons that I respect her strength, her passion for the things of God, the courage. I honor this. These three people have really impacted my life. And I want to say thank you so much for honoring my invitations, mommy. Thank you for joining me today. And I'll just quickly shout out to people. I have my brother, Stephen, Elsie. I don't know who that is. If you don't mind, you can please put your camera. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you for joining. Akiyemi David, that's my brother. Thank you for joining. Dikinomo, thank you for joining, joining me today. Olol Ola Dejo, thank you for joining me today. Somebody signing with Huawei, somebody signing with HP. Thank you all for joining me today. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. All right, today we are talking about the root cause. I'm still bringing people in and letting them wait for a long time. Sorry, people. A lot is happening around the world generally, generally. So today, why we choose, why we have chosen Zoom is so that we can talk without reservation. They, I, I believe uh, if even if you have your children with you, please, you can go ahead and use your piece. So that some of this conversation, we don't even want them to hear you. We want to discuss within ourselves. So a lot is happening around the world generally, most especially in my country, Nigeria. We've seen a lot. We've seen a lot. Mommy Shola just finished a program uh, last week, three days, talking about things, uh, the, uh, problems about children and solution. And you know, the guest also did a lot of work. And uh, we can't just keep quiet. If you call out the intentional parents, and she said the same thing, and I've said the same thing in the past, that if you say, okay, my children are not going to mingle with these people, they're going to be old and do homeschooling. What about the social aspect? They will go to party, they will go everywhere. What if you that you have raised your child well? And your child is in love with one of these children that were not properly raised. And they come together as well husband, husband and wife. What is the, the problem start in homes? So the earlier we do our part, the better for us. And the, the earlier we can impart as many people as we can impart, the better for us. So today I am going to just be calling on Mommy Tolu to please just speak to us briefly on our opinion generally. What do you think is the root cause of of children inappropriate behavior in this age and time. Go thank ahead. Thank you so me. much, Oye. Um, thank on. you so much. God bless you. You know, I love you so much. I love and um, um, I have learned a lot from you also um, all these years. I have seen your faith and your trust in God. And I've seen that um, God's word always mm -hmm. works. And my darling sister, Pat, I see you there. You're it's good, to, it's good to see you after a long time. <laughs> I was so excited when I saw you on the Thank you so much, man. Yeah, Thank you. So, it's so good to see you. Thank you so much. God bless you so much for all your work. And Mommy Adeshola, thank you so much for coming. It's nice to meet you here. Nice to uh, meet you too, Ma. <laughs> so without taking much of your time, let's delve straight into it. What causes um, this kind of unruly behavior in children? You know, I, I think that there are two fundamental things that, um, that will be the cause for these things. Um, and that is we don't tell and we don't show. Hmm. You know, when children are born, they're just blank slates. They're just there, they're clean. And the Bible admonishes us to train your child up in the way in which he or she would go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. You know, I just took time to look at the meaning of what training and training means is the action of teaching a person or an animal a particular skill or type of behavior. So when we are talking about training, the question is what particular skill or type of behavior are we putting into our children from day one, you know, and to teach means to impart knowledge. You know, so what are we imparting? What are we instructing? To teach is to impart knowledge, to instruct someone on how to do something. So how are we teaching our children how to live life? You know, how are we imparting? What ideas or principles are we teaching them? Teaching means ideas or principles 
taught by an authority. And as parents, we stand as authority in the lives of our children. So when we fail to show and tell, that is when we fail to train up our children, then we begin to see these issues happening. Let's take it, let's break it down. We say show and tell. Like I said, children are born with blank slates and we need to, to teach them and to show them how to do things. When we show them physical things, how to lace their shoes, we teach them all the motor skills and all of that. So we also need to show them the mental, the spiritual things also. We need to tell them that this is what should be done at each time. Bible says that you should teach your children, so they shall teach their children's children and the word would go on for generations yet unborn. You know, so what exactly are we showing our children? What are we telling them? When they, when they do behave and be saying, somebody, Daleru, somebody in Tuleshe, you know, when they start being unruly and they start destroying things, do we say our model won't she? Or do we sit the child down and say this, do we tell the child the value of things and to show them that these things are things that we don't break? Children listen if we tell them things. Not that we have to shout or do anything like that, but we can tell them it's just simple. Um, Tom, come, this thing here is a decoration. What is this? It's a decoration. What do we do with decorations? We don't play with decorations. We keep them because they make our home beautiful. What is this? This is Tom's toy. What does Tom do with this? He plays with this toy. And he plays with the toy nicely so that he can give to somebody else when he doesn't want it again. You know, and he begins to, sh to, to, to impact in that child's life when we do little things like that. Then your child would not go to a neighbor's house or a friend's house and then begin to touch all their decorations and break things and start apologizing or begins to run around the place because you have taught the child that this is not a play thing. You know, we need to, to show these children, demonstrate it to them physically and tell them by mouth what exactly it is that we want them to do or not to do. We need to start our parenting with the end in mind at all times. What is the end result that you want to have for your children? I always say something. If you don't take time to train your children now, trust me, you will spend the rest of your life praying for that child. And you will never have peace because there's no way if your child has issues, your heart would go to the child as a mother or a father. You know, so if you want you yourself to have peace, why don't you do that work now? And you don't have to spend a lot of time to do these things. It's just the daily little, little things. We're in the age, unfortunately, where children don't do because I told you to. In my age when we were growing up, if our parents said because I said so, that is enough reason for you not to do that. But now children are much more inquisitive. We're just in that age. And that is the age we are in. So what do we need to do to, to, to these children? Bible says, spare the rod and spoil the child. It is not the rod of Cain. There's the rod called the rod of instruction. Because we can learn in two ways, either by instruction or by experience. So we can use that rod of instruction for our children every time. I don't want you to do X because of Y. And if you do X, this is the result that would happen. Do you want that for yourself? You know, if you, I always use the, 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 the analogy of a fan for my kids when I talk to them. I said, when you put off a fan or you put off an AC, the fan does not stop oscillating immediately. Neither does the, the room become hot immediately, but the power is off. And eventually, whether you like it or not, the fan will stop oscillating, the AC will stop cooling and it becomes hot. And that is the effect of some of the actions that we take now. The effects or the consequences will not show up now. They may show up 10 years, 20 years down the line, but they will show up. So we need to tell our children when we teach them that this is cause and effect. This is why I don't want you to do X because of Y. And a lot of times, a lot of us parents, we, we, we cloak our own selves on high pedestal, so to speak. We have never done wrong before. We have always been holier than thou and the best in the world. And these are all lies. 
I teach my children, I'm talking about myself now, a lot by my personal experience. I look at where I have failed and my shortcomings and I tell myself, I don't want my kids to be that. Because I have walked that road before, I can tell them that this was the point where I missed it. And this is what I ought to have done, not to have done this. And this is the result of what I did then. You know, so we need to explain to our children. We're not bringing ourselves down when we show them by our own lives what the consequences of unruly behavior or bad training or not listening to instruction can cause a child. So I won't take up much time because I know you have a lot of people there. So I'll stop there and um, we'll take it up later. Oh Thank my, you so for me, I am getting blessed already. Oh my goodness. I, I just want to just speak out some things, you know, for those who are just joining, I've already introduced Mommy Tolu and I said, it's not because she's seated right here. I know our children, they are grown. They are grown. These are children I met about 12 years ago. And among them now, we have doctors, we have engineers, you know, and seeing them from the little becoming who they are today with, the, with your leadings by the grace of God, it's a testimony. You are not talking uh, just what you don't know. You're talking with your experience. It is working. See, you said something that is very important. You said, uh, and I'm, I remember when I was still not when I was still waiting for my children. Somebody said to me that when you have children, we see you always complain. When my children come to your house, you pick their cushions and everything. You say they are scattering my house. We will see. Can you imagine the children that are yet unborn having enemies? And I said to the person, you will see that I will teach my children not to touch, and they will not touch. See, there's some things that we take, we, we just absorb because of friendship and the negativity is having an effect on our children. Please, we are all going to be having time to ask questions later. We have a lot of experienced people here. Mommy Shola is here. She's an intentional parenting coach and she's going to be talking to us. So please, well, some, don't take this negativity in the name of friendship. I said it back to the person straight away. I said, you will see, uh, you will not die. You will see me teaching my children to learn not to touch decorations. And by the grace of God, my children never for once scatter decorations. Just like Mommy Tolu said. Show and tell. It's key. Modeling. I have few videos I'm going to be showing also. So today, we're going to see them and we're going to talk about them. Please pin them down. Pin them down. The end result is what we are after. Teach them now. Do the work now. So that you don't spend the rest of your life praying and not having peace of mind. It is not about what you put on your children. It's not about what you give. It is the content. What do you? What are you putting inside? Not putting on them. What you put inside? It's not my day to talk. I don't want to talk. <laughs> I don't want to talk. You know. And she says something very important. Some of us are like holier than thou. I never did that to my parents. And you know, you never have any mistake. It's not true. Let us, let them know that this was the mistake you did. What are the mistakes you did in your life? that you want to make, you know, you want to correct on your growing glory. This is what I did, it was wrong. And I don't want it to happen to my children and the intentionality. So I'm gonna be calling uh, Mommy Shola also to briefly talk to us. Mommy Shola is based in uh, Nigeria, Port Harcourt, and it's a busy place, you know how it can be in Port Harcourt. And by the grace of God, our children are listening, following instruction. So I want her to now please, in our experience, how were you able to teach your children in that kind of environment. See, by the grace of God, Qatar is still much better. Most of us that are here, we are living in Qatar. <laughs> Our environment is very, if you are intentional in your parenting, it is very easy for you to carry it out because the environment is already helping you to achieve what you want to achieve. So now we want Mommy Shola to tell us, how are you able to achieve teaching your children to have appropriate behavior in the midst of what is going on in Nigeria? All right, before I call Mommy Shola to go ahead, I'll just give a shout out to Miss Remy. I see you there. Thank you for joining Miss Remy. Miss Remy is a good friend and she's my former colleague. Mm -hmm. and she is right there. Who else is there? Okay, people are not putting their camera. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Excited there. Thank you so much. God bless you. Mommy Shola, over to you. God bless you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Oye, for this meeting. Thank you for bringing me to your platform. My pleasure, Mommy. Thank you. God bless you. I, I celebrate you. I, I really celebrate you. 
I celebrate you. Thank you for the good work you're doing. Thank you for yielding to that instruction from God. Thank God you, bless you. God bless Vision Guide. Amen. And thank you for being a very lovely human being, you know. You are, <laughs> you've got a very good heart. God bless you. Okay, thank you to all the mommies in the house. Mommy told me, oh, you, you just hit the nail on the head and then you, you just dropped some bombshells. It's nice hearing uh, from you today, nice meeting you. And of course, um, our third mommy as well, thank you for coming up today. All right, for everyone online, God bless you. Thank you for staying. Thank you for coming online. I just trust God that you turn one or two things from ourselves today. Of course, by the end of today, we we'll know that um, uh, values and virtues would have been added to us. Okay, I, I am based in Nigeria and uh, Port Harcourt specifically, and then uh, I'm sure you've been hearing a lot, a lot of news about Nigeria and then a lot of news, especially if you are outside the country, a lot of news about Nigeria and it most especially Port Harcourt because um, we have a combination, the, the city itself, um, the indigenous are those who have a different belief about life. Um, most of the things that are achieved in the city are done by foreigners. When I mean foreigners, I mean those who stepped in from another state into the state. Um, you see that their oil is always in their brain and always in their head. Uh, oil and money, like they call it. You know, they fight for the clan fights against clan. Um, there are men who want to work. Uh, they talk to companies to hire people who are not educated just because the company uh, is located in their, in their, uh, in their neighborhood and all of that, in their local government. You know, a lot of things. But as an intentional parent, please let me to ourselves. We need we need to mute some persons. Okay, as an intentional parent or an intentional parent to be, you just have to make up your mind on focusing on how you are going to achieve your goal and target concerning parenting. And so when I started raising my children, or even before they came, I had already made up my mind. Mommy Tolu said something about uh, past mistakes. I started thinking about how I was raised. And then I, I was able to do, by God's grace, I was able to do a little sieve. Like, okay, I don't want to raise my children this way. I would rather prefer to raise them this way because um, probably in the course of my journey, I saw some other children that were raised in a better way that I was raised. So I made up my mind that by the time I get married and start raising my children, it's gonna be different. So I'm, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that. So I started doing all of that saving and all of that separation, even before I got married. And then, you know, the way it is when, uh, in the course of our journey in life, there, there is a there is a time that we say that life happens to us. Sometimes we want to do some things and then life happens and then we don't get to do it. Even up to doing the will of God, sometimes we, we were once committed and then we got married or we got a job and then it's taking a whole lot of us, it's taking a hold of us and then we have so much to contend with as a human being. But when it's, that is, where the point of intentionality came in for me as a mom and as a parent. I knew what I wanted. I knew what I went through as a child. I knew how much, I knew the level that my parents could do. And I knew what I could have gained if they had done those extra things I saw in other kids. So I made up my mind that, oh, my children are not going to miss this. The most enjoyed is I'm putting all my energy. And of course, before the stair coming, thank God I was already a believer. Before the stair coming, I'd set up my spiritual antenna in place to start praying for the children yet unborn, <laughs> to start praying. And by the time I got married and pregnancy and all of the process started, oh, I would pray and pray and pray and pray for even the child that I've not even seen. Praise God. So it's been like that. But basically, like Oye said, Oye said, how I've been able to do it. It got to a point 
that I had to set up some pillars for myself, which I use even for intentional parenting. And these pillars became my watch, became my guide kind of in my parenting. My first pillar is my belief system. I had to really make sure that my belief system has to be positive in a way that it will enhance my parenting and help my children. And you know, you know, um, um, I had to really reconfigure my mind and put myself in the position of, it is possible to have children who are not gonna be wayward. It is possible to raise children who are going to serve God right from birth. It is possible to raise children who will be able to take decisions, quality decisions. It is possible. You know, I just started, you know, I started talking to myself. I started changing some beliefs that were not right. Probably the ones that I grew up with or the ones that I imbibed along the line. I started working on my belief system that it is possible. I have children. Like Oya said, it is possible you raise children who are not going to be scattering the house. It is possible to raise children who are going to be obedient, who are, going, who are going to be respectful. It is possible to raise children who are not going to be throwing tantrums at um, when they go out, when, when you have an outing and then you, is your child that's throwing tantrums at, uh, at the beach, is your child that's throwing tantrums at an eatery, is your child that's throwing tantrums in different places. You know, my belief system, I still working on it. So, and with a uh, spiritual understanding by the word, through the word of God, I must tell us, because it's likely somebody who wants to say, oh, how were you able to achieve this? I was just able to achieve it through the word of God by the help of the Holy Spirit. Because it couldn't have been me who would even understand all of these things. But as I prayed about it, God began, Holy Spirit began to teach me, okay, this is my intention for parents. This is how I want parents to raise children. And then it started and it began with me even before I started teaching it to the world. And then my second pillar was to work on my routines. You know, while I was growing up, there, could, there, was, there was no much of structured routines. I'm not saying that fixed routine is, uh, is a perfect fix for parenting or for intentional or quality parenting, intentional parenting. But the truth is that um, there must be some routine that, your children must grow up with to know that, okay, this is how we do things in my house. This is how my mom has taught me to do things. This is how my dad has taught me to do things. Routines. So I started working on my routines that, um, Shola, you can't afford to live anyhow. You can't afford not to have a structured life that your children will grow up to imbibe, that they'll be able to say that, okay, this is how my mom is. This is what my mom does part time. This is who my mother is. This is what my mother or my father believes in. All right. And then the third pillar for my parenting that helped me is it, I, I began to really be conscious of the fact that external influences does exist. You know, sometimes we raise our children thinking that it is only us that is giving them instruction. Oh, there are a lot of instructors in the world. No wonder the scripture says that my sheep hear my voice. The voice of an hireling they won't follow. The voice of another they won't follow. It means that there are other coaches, there are other teachers, there are other fathers and mothers, uncles and aunties out there that are ready to give your children instruction or that will be in the position to instruct your child. How will your child be able to differentiate which is um, a quality instruction to imbibe, to obey, to follow, advice to follow? There are times that you and I won't be there as parents. How can they pick up the best advice? Most people got influence in their teenage age, in their university level, or maybe in our time, it was in our university level, but now it's so, so, oh God, I don't want to say it's so bad, but it has gone so down, that so low, that even primary school, in the primary, in the, at the primary level, children influence one another into bad characters, bad style of living, imbibing wrong values. And so you and I, we can't pretend about external influences. 
That's why some parents are caught on our ways. They're like, oh, I never knew my child is into this. I never knew my child is doing this. Oh, but the truth is that if we are conscious of these external influences, when they are bringing the signs, it's like signs and wonders. When they start doing the wonders, <laughs> Of those other things that those other style that you didn't teach them, those other values that you didn't teach them, you will see it. You'll be able to pick it. Why? Because you're conscious of it. You you already know that as that child goes to school, that child is mixing up with other children, probably who didn't get the kind of training you are giving them. And then by the time the child com comes back and begin to use some languages, uh, you 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 need to pick it up and like oh, when did you start using social -so languages? When did you start speaking such words? When did you and then you begin your correction. And of course, if we leave it to uh, nature, if we say, okay, it's, uh, it's normal, you know, when children are growing up, are their friends, um, that's what is happening, that is what is, uh, that's what is in vogue, and um, they, they will change it. They, before you know it, it will be part of them, and that will really take hold of them. Let's not forget that the devil is out there like a roaring lion, infusing and energizing his own. And we all know that these wrong values are faster to pick than even the right values. The wrong values are so quick to pick. They are so, so quick to pick. It, it only takes one trial or, set, or two trial. It, it, sometimes it's just one conviction. Somebody, yeah, just try it. It doesn't mean anything. No, no. But my, my daddy said it's wrong. Yeah, yeah, just try it. Just try it. Just try it. And then they try it out. So I be, I really took my, uh, brought my knowledge to the fact that to accept the reality that there's external influences out there. And then that got, got me into the consciousness of who to allow into my space. Even when I was having housemates and all of that, I made sure that I arranged, I put things in some structures in place some things that my, my housemate is not going to be involved in with my kids. And that really helped a lot because it helped. I, I couldn't have left my housemate, like the, the types that I had then, who were not learned, not schooled. I couldn't have left them to do homework for my children because I already knew that uh, leaving them to do homework for my children, my children will go to school and learn how to pronounce properly. And then the housemate begin to teach them that night is naive. <laughs> Especially if they are from a particular place, maybe like a Bible. Yeah, knife, knife. And then if they are from even uh, they call Yoruba knife, <laughs> you know, this, and then you are paying so much in the school, and they are teaching the child that book, and the child comes back because we didn't put attention to do the homework to help them ourselves. We left, we left them, and then you know, all of those things, so I was conscious of it. And then another thing that helped me was emotional intelligence. I actually didn't know that this is called emotional intelligence until the, uh, the until people started talking about this, learning it, and then gave it that emotional intelligence. I, I saw it, why I'm using it as emotional intelligence is because I know we have different types of people here and all of that, different people with different belief systems, especially spiritual background. Why I'm using emotional intelligence, back then I saw it, even as at now, I saw it as intuitive spirit through the leading of the Holy Spirit. I make sure that I, um, I intentionally want to listen to the Holy Spirit concerning my children. I ask Holy Spirit questions. How oh, Holy Spirit, what is wrong with this child now? And what is happening? Why is this child doing like this? Why is this child doing like this? And then before I know it, sometimes I don't even get to kneel down like, Seriously praying, oh, father, oh, what is happening to my child? Ah, why is my child talking this way, doing this way? Why is my child not, not uh, being obedient like that? I don't, I just ask, Holy Spirit, where is this child then getting this from? And, and by the time I ask, before I know it, I'll be inspired. So I call that um, listening to the Holy Spirit and then being intelligent enough to know how to put it in place and then put the corrections in place. And of course, I made up my mind that my children were gonna be educated both formally and informally. So it was not just education, which is the, um, the fifth pillar. Now, it, the education system that we put in place for them as their parents was their education system and their growth system was not based uh, on just maths and English. No, or all the subjects in the class. We wanted them to have a balance and let them be total 
Let that child be a total child. Let them be balanced. Let the formal learning be learned and then let the informal learning be learned. And so I engage them early, engage them early with home activities, engage them early in some discussion, engage them early in some brain tasking things. You know, back then when we're growing up, if our mom says, go and give me a bowl, and then we turn back and say, mommy, where is the bowl? They will say, they will now give you one, one abstract, one unbelievable place to go and search. Then it will now come back to your brain that, ah, uh -uh, bowl is usually in the kitchen or night is usually in the drawer. Then you go and pick it. But you know, but children, um, parents now, they want to solve all the problems. So I ensured that because they needed to grow, I ensured that they got engaged in solving problems developing their problem solving skills. If I tell you, get me this thing, which I know that you know where it is, and you ask me question, I will give you an off key answer. And go and check my this, go and check my bedroom. What I know that you know it's in the kitchen. I'll say, hey, go and check my bathroom inside the, in my bathroom. And then the child quickly recovers. So that's, oh, I wasn't supposed to ask question. I was just supposed to go and get it. And you know, sometimes children will ask, some, they will deliberately ask some questions because they are feeling lazy or getting lazy to do what you're getting them to do. Okay, so we made up our mind on that. It was a decision between myself and my husband. And then the sixth pillar was, was that uh, we ensured and intentionally ensured that as husband and wife, we had, we have, not had now, we have a good relationship that can be a good example for our children. Our love life, our spiritual life, our honor for God, our respect for the things of God, our respect for people. You know, sometimes we are supposed to play up when people do some hard things, but we sacrifice that because our children need to learn how to solve problems. As adults, we could have done um, or reacted to some situations, but because our children were, uh, are going to be around, we chose to sacrifice that. And then sometimes we look stupid to some people. Sometimes we look like we don't know what we're doing. We look like we can't defend ourselves, but we know what we're doing actually. But we are teaching our children some core values there that they shouldn't go out to keep fighting. They shouldn't go out to, they should learn how to handle situations. And then they should learn to respond to situations and not be reactive. And of course, the seventh pillar, which is the very core one, is that time is off, right? And we have to stop you for a while. Thank you so much for those, you know, like you are just pumping it, pumping it into my head, like, oh, bam, good, bam. Well, you have a question on the chat, so I want to share okay. the chat. But before then, please let's mute ourselves. It is very important to stay muted. Let's stay muted. And you want to, if you want to say something, please just come to the uh, MOD part and just raise your hand. We are going to have a lot of time for questioning, contribution. Please just stay, let's stay muted for now. God bless you. Thank you, everybody, so that we can all hear the speaker and gain something very important. Well, Michelle, I want to just say thank you for those points. Oh, this does a lot of points. But you have a question on the chat that says, uh, please give us examples of structures you put in place around your kids if you have mates. Example of structure. You're muted, mommy. Unmute yourself. Sorry about that. I forgot that I, no I muted myself. So number one, um, I'll give an example of what I do. Okay. I when I bring in maids back then, when my children were still quite young, when I bring in maids, what I do is that I have a discussion with the with the maids and, and I'm like, okay, number one, my maids don't do my children's um school homework. Another one is that I attend to my children's meal myself. I, I usually supervise what my maid is doing. Though I do my cooking in my house, 
But in some people's cases, it might not be so, it might not work out like that. But even if your maid does the cooking, please check, supervise, just check. Check what that maid has prepared for your child. Check, check. Number three, I ensure that my children had sound relationship with me that they don't replace me with the maid, even if I'm not around. So no maid is going to tell my children, don't tell mommy. Anything they do, even, any, even when they do wrong things, I made them comfortable enough to be able to tell me the wrong things that they have done. That no maid is going to take advantage of that and be saying, um, you see, this thing I did, don't tell mommy. If you tell mommy, I'm going to tell mommy or I'm going to tell daddy that you did so, 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 and so. So my children know that when they mess up, they can, they can talk to me, they can tell me. They can be truthful about it. They can tell me I did this thing. Sometimes, an example is when they break plates, at least at that young age, because I engage them quickly in Austria's and all that. When they break plates, you know, naturally, when you have, numbers, when you have enough numbers of those plates at home, when they break, number one thing is, I don't want my mommy to spot me, so they will likely want to go and hide it. But they should understand that they are more precious than the plates that they are broken in, in the house. So they are, they are quick to tell me as soon as I come back, mommy, sorry, while I was washing the dishes, this plate broke in my hand. Oh, how did it happen? I can now go through the process. Okay, you were not careful. Next time be careful because we can't start losing things like this. So we don't finish up everything we have in the house. As you are growing, you will still need this plate. You know, all of those other talk and all of that comes in. But the children must know that they have you first. They have your love. Even, in, even while they have done things that are wrong, they have your love. You see, some, some of these people that we bring in, what they do is that they will definitely want to look for an opportunity um, to, to exercise some authority without you over your children, if they see that there is a loophole somewhere, if they see that there is so much fear in your children in relating with you, they take up that passionate part. They want to act like they love your children more than you. And then before you know it, the children will start tilting towards them. And then they get so engrossed with it. And no, that's not because you don't want your children to love your mate. You should show them love. But there should be difference between mother's love and the auntie who came to the house to do some work. So, okay, so those <clears throat> structures are the things I put in place. And then I ensured that the, the, most of the, the mates I had, they, they, know their, they know their limits. They know their boundary with the kids. They know their boundary. They know their limits with the kids. See, they know what they will do that the children themselves report and say, Auntie so 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 did this. And then the maids too know that there is nothing they will do that my children will not tell me. They know that my children will tell, even though I'm going to correct that child, or if it's them, if it's other way around, they know. So things like that are the things that awesome, I'm doing. awesome, awesome, awesome. Wow, that's a great point, mommy. Mm -hmm. See, in case you're not aware, mommy Shola is also a pastor. And you know what that means when you give a pastor a microphone. <laughs> oh, yeah, mommy Shola is blessed. He's a pastor, a teacher, a mother. And I wish we have all the time. I sincerely wish we have all the time today because I just feel one Saturday is not enough. But I believe by the grace of God, we are going to put something like this again together. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, no worries, Sister Pauline. Thank you for joining. I saw your message. God bless you. So, see, there's something that you said that is very important. It is building that relationship between you and your child. The parent-child relationship is a must. And don't see, and it's not only maybe house help that, that can do this thing. It can happen with your uncle's uh, grandma's brother. I said something in one of my videos. I said, the moment you start telling your child that if you don't listen, I will tell your grandma. If you don't listen, I will tell your uncle, sorry, you're already failing. If there's something I said to myself long ago before I became a mother, I said, I will never, my child will listen to me as the mother. Because I do see this thing growing up. I have heard this over and again. People telling their children, I'm going to report you to your uncle. Ah, uh ah. -uh. This is a failure and we are not seeing it. 
So it, it's not only the maid that can really, like, that I really make the importance of the child, like, oh, uh, building the relationship, it can happen. You know, it's, we, it takes our sensitivity to know that even our mother, their grandma is passing their boundaries. We have to underline and let everybody understand our parenting styles is not to be rude to your parent. I, I appreciate my mom. She raised me well, she did her part, but I want to do better. You understand? See, grandmas, they can spoil your children. They can, they can make them break rules and boundaries and giving them assurance that don't worry, I'll talk to your mother. It doesn't work in my house. So these are the things we have to be sensitive to. We have to be intentional about these things, not to be rude to our parents, but the, the way they brought us up, most of the time, I think they are forgotten. And when, when it comes to grandchildren, they want to be, at, at, we are on Zoom, that's how we are here. They want to be careless. I am not sorry to say that word. They want to be careless in the name of, it's my grandchildren. No, it doesn't work. Don't forget that your child is your mom's grandchildren, but that is your own growing glory, your child. Who we give the report to you are the one that we give the report. Okay. So set the boundaries. Yeah. Somebody asking question, please let's mute ourselves. I am going to call mommy part briefly because I have few permission. Mm -hmm. Remember the video you sent to me. I want to share it with everybody. I, I also have that video before I, I saw some videos online. Before we start asking questions, I want us to see these videos. We talk about it. What's your opinion? What went wrong? Can't it again? All right, time is going. I know I understand that. Mommy, uh, I just want you to say something in two, three minutes, Mommy Pat. I, I don't just want to have you here without contributing. Please mute yourself. Mute yourself. I have a lot of people here. I wish I can call names one by one. Uh, a, a lot of people here. I'll, I'll, I'll do that later. Just hang on there. I'll give you a shout out. My childhood friend is here also. Mrs. Oluka. All right, just hang on there. Mommy Pat, please go ahead in a few minutes. Just tell us what is your opinion about what is going on around the world. I want to appreciate everyone that is here today. Our yes. mama in the house. I want to thank God for your life and your contribution thus far. I think why everybody is trying to wake up, not to wake up as possible. As parents, because of what we are seeing, you know, happening to our children. What we are seeing happening that is you no know, breaking our hearts. You know, breaking our hearts. You see a young boy of 17 years, you no know, wanting to get rich. And you no know, taking maybe the girlfriend to make rituals. We are seeing a, a 10 year old boy that they pay you no know, going out, going somewhere to go and learn how to make money, how to learn Yahoo. You understand some terrible things. We are seeing little boys and girls going to an hotel to want to go and rent an apartment, you no, know, in an hotel, a 15 year old child. You no, know, some things are just heart breaking. You no, know, that is why we all, we are concerned. Yes, most of our mom, mothers that have spoken, Mommy Tolu and Mommy Shola, they, yes, that, they've spoken so well, but I want to add my voice to it. No, there's no way I'm not going to talk, I'm not, I'm not going to be spiritual, uh, spirituality into it. No, that was one thing that God said in the Bible. He said, I know Abraham that is going to command his children after me. So what, what's the point I'm trying to establish this evening? Most of us that we are parents now, do we have value system? No, do we have, you know, we have, no, I don't mean, our values, what do we believe in? What, what do we a 10, old, a 10 years old boy go and learn how to do Yahoo and we'll get the boy a laptop who we'll put everything when I saw that video I was so shocked that they know they are going to learn Yahoo so the problem the foundation we cannot just ignore the children yes there is a past no concerning the children maybe influence from outside yes they can be influenced by the society they can be influenced by friends they can be influenced by social media. But what are we parents doing with our kids? What do you know yourself that you want to impart to your child? God said, I know Abraham. He has, he, he has gotten all it takes to train that children for me. What do you have as a parent? What, do you have, what is your value on discipline, 
on, 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 on wealth, on finances, on, 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 on emotion, no, in, in communicating with your child. How do you relate with your child at home? Do you value making money than your children? Because some of this, some of these things is not the, the, the root cause is negligence, unchallenged attitude, not being there for your child, not talking enough with your child, not having time for your children. You leave the child, okay, the child is okay. The, 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 no, the, I've done my part, the child can continue now. No, your role in the life of your child from like we've been taught from the beginning, since the child is in your womb, you start, you start speaking over the child's life. And even when the child is, God gets married, you see some parents, they still have some level of influence on their children. What do you know that you want to pass across to your child? What do you know? Especially about God. There is nothing you need about training a child that you cannot find in the scripture. You cannot find in the world. No, the word of God is complete. I believe we have, we might have other religion in this place, but you have what you believe in. Your religion cannot teach you cannot tell you not to impart good morals, good virtues, good knowledge in your, you know, in your children. You have it to your, you know, in your religion. So what do you have to you want to pass to that child? You might have come from a family that is not, not that is not well placed, that is not on structures, that they don't know God, but you, you must like, you must be determined. You must make up your mind when you are getting going to that marriage, the kind of seed you want to bring forth for God. Because actually, God gave you those children as caretakers. God wants you to nurture those children the way God will be happy with you, that they'll become a blessing to you and the society. So what do you want to impart? So now impart yourself. Build yourself as a parent. As a parent. Not get information, especially from the word of God. And there's some beautiful books you can read on parenting. Guess what you need to get so that you can impart positively into the life of these children. Don't neglect your child for nothing, for nothing. Don't neglect your child. Let the communication be intact. Monitor your children. Monitor them. Because they are exposed to so many things now. The social media is there. That is even the most the, the, the terrible aspect of it. A child of 10 years can have a phone. A child of 9 years can have a phone for what? For what? So what is the value you are imparting in that child? The child, you know, and you know, most of these are our children. The access through which you know, this negative influence come upon them is what they see, what they hear. What they see, what they hear. So you must guide every loophole. You must be on your toe. You must at a last concerning your child. You must be a soldier. No, you must be a soldier. Watch every of their steps. I'm not saying you must be suspicious, but be conscious of your, you know, like a division guy, so your glory, glory. Don't allow anything to replace the training you need to give to your child. The tra especially the spiritual training. The spiritual training is so, so important. Let me tell you something. When you pass your child with the spiritual training, yes, there may be a point in that boy's life or that girl's life that he or she might want to derail. But I tell you, God will speak for you. Because what you are training the child and you are praying for the child. You are speaking the word of God into that child's life. The, guy, the child is seeing it, you are saying it, and they are seeing you, you know, living in that word you are teaching them. You are living the world you are teaching them. So don't allow, don't allow your place in the life of your child to be replaced because of job, because of money, because of friends, because of, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So that's what I want to say. What do you know that you want to impart into the life of your child? What value do you have yourself? Oh. What value do you have yourself? It's not all about making money, making wealth. You don't, you don't bring your child, you don't, you don't teach them how to pray, how to read the word of God. You don't study together. No, you don't teach them your own life. Like one of our mother said, I, I teach my children by experience, by my life. Yes, there's no shyness in that. When you have made wrong, no wrong decision, the past, let your children know it is okay to make mistakes, but don't, I don't want you to do the mistake again. What do you know that you want to impress your child? Because that is it. If you miss it there, you miss it. If you don't you pass anything into your child, and they will pass those things from outside. Social media will do that for you. 
Their friends will do that for you. But know that, that there was one thing, something happened recently in my home. My daughter was about to celebrate her 13th, 13th, 13th birthday. And I know most of our friends in school. And I said, okay, invite some of your friends to come to the house of the party. And it was telling me she's not going to invite this girl. I said, what happened? But both of you, you are good friends. Say, no, no, that now this girl, she's not a good girl anymore. In school, she's very rude, even to teachers. Her behavior, her behavior has changed, her character has changed. So she's trying to stay away from her, from that girl. Because she knows the value system. I don't, I cannot tolerate things like that. But not that because I, it's from the word of God. It's from this, God does not permit you. You are not supposed to do this. Sit down with your child. Sit down with your child. Be homely as parents. And God will help us over the lives of our children in Jesus' name. Hey, Thank man. you very much. Thank you so much, Mommy Pat. God bless you. In case you don't know, Mommy Pat is the pastor also. And when pastors are talking, you can really, if you are a Christian and a believer, you can really, literally feel the anointing, the power of God all around here. And I believe when we talk about parenting, it's spiritual also. Because we can't do it alone, you know, it's not by power, nor by might. It's by the grace of God. And you see how much I'm blessed. You can see where, where I'm tapping the energy from. When Oye is talking, sometimes you don't understand. You can see that. I, when Mommy Tolu is talking, ah, you can see me so there. When Mommy Shola is talking, you can see how much I am blessed. I am blessed to have those mamas in my life. And uh, there's some things that you said something very important, Mommy Pat. And that is one thing I believe every intentional parent should always ask yourself. What do you know that you want to impart your children? I've said this severally over and again in many of my videos. It's like you don't know how to swim. You don't have idea. Then you jump into the sea. In the same way having children, becoming a parent without you understanding what is parenting. It is not enough. Ah, I'm in love with that guy. We're getting married. Some people have seen parents that I felt literally I should slap them. The love for the guy or the lady is what was just overwhelming them. They just want to get married. They are not picturing, okay, are we going to have children? After having these children, what next? So we all need to call ourselves home today and correct our mistakes. When I look back and I see myself, I say, oh, this wouldn't have happened to me. This wouldn't have happened. Why did it happen? Okay, how can I guide my children? Exactly what we are talking about today. And before I show the videos, please, mommies, please stay tuned because I believe People are going to be asking questions soon. We have, after the videos, please, you can just raise your hand. You can give your contribution and give you ask your question. My mamas are here to help us out with the question. But there's something, there's some things I need to say that I, be, I believe a lot of parents are the one endangering their children. Hence, they're having inappropriate behavior. We cannot overemphasize the point of modeling mirroring what do you what your child is your mirror whatever you see or what your, whatever your child sees you do exactly what you're going to do you can't teach a child don't do what i'm doing just do what i say and from the video i'm going to show you you're going to see example of modeling and what are the uh, and some other videos and there's something there's something that uh, there's something that's always on my mind that people use as compliment and i realize that even now People are using it for children as compliments. In my own sincere opinion, it is not a compliment. If you are the type that says this thing, stop, you look sexy. It is not a compliment. This one, see, I wanted to say this thing a long time. I cannot even say it on Facebook or anywhere. I have to put myself together to come to Zoom and say, okay, I need to say this word. That's why we are on Zoom. Telling somebody who is your friend, even if you are both female, you look sexy. It's not a compliment. We need to start looking into the way we talk. We are endangering our children unknowingly. So these days when people see little children, girls, two years old, oh, kitty baby, you look sexy. Please don't let anyone use that compliment on your child. In my own sincere opinion, it is not a compliment. Somebody coming to the child and saying, ah, oh, you are uh, what is that about your growing? Look at your breast. Look at your bump. Excuse you. It is not allowed. A lot of people are doing it. Parents, they think it's, it, you know, we are just enjoying life. My child is growing up. That is not a sex education. 
Of course, we have to teach our children sex education as early as possible, but not as endangering them that they get comfortable when one naughty uncle is doing the same to them. They'll feel, okay, mommy is doing it. Auntie is doing it. My grandma is saying the same thing. So it's okay. We have to have boundaries. Boundaries in our words, in our action. It is very, very important. Endangering our children without knowing is the most miserable thing that can happen to a parent. So we have to ensure we are not just exposing them to negativity or giving them channel to have an inappropriate behavior. Guarding our children, it's a must. We have to safeguard them, like telling them this is right, this is not right. See, some people don't really mean harm. And that is why everybody cannot be your friend. I've said it over and again. Friends can walk away. But you don't want your children to walk away. Your own is just extreme. One of the other time, she was saying Yahoo. In case you don't understand what she's talking about, Yahoo. Internet girl. That's what she meant. So this thing starts from little people who influence them. It doesn't really matter. It's just our our, our forefathers' money. Not just let's just let's take it. Let's be sensitive as parents. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm told you, do you want to say something before I share the video? Or can I go ahead and share the video? Okay, all right. All right, I have a few videos here that I would like to share. So we are going to just this first one is about anyway. I believe this is the power of modeling. Am I sharing my screen? Wait, hold on. No, yes. Can we see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Yes, we can okay, see it. Okay, all right, okay. I thought you were not seeing it. Sorry about that. saw that short video we, did you see the video no no ah okay i'm on my own hold on can we see this screen now okay this is the power of modeling i'm not talking about negative or positive here but this is what this child has seen over the time and i believe this is tiktok I'm not sure other videos. This I'm not saying the child has done something wrong. It is not wrong. I'm just showing the power. It's so cute. Totally. <laughs> it might be a Christian song or your religion or whatever. It might be something good. I'm not talking about the negative aspect now. I'm talking about the power of modeling. You don't need to talk. Just do it. Children will follow. I believe the mother is the major general in TikTok. And for those who are so used to TikTok, even when they are doing it and their child bumps into their video, they can give you an odd slap. At that moment, that TikTok is their priority. I'm not talking about the negative part. I'm just showing you the power of modeling. Okay, let's see this video, please. Where, where, where? Okay, I think I'll just go to my Facebook. Hold on, please, everyone. Okay, let's look at this. It's not for me. 
We can hear the sound, but uh, it's not moving. We can hear the sound, Miss Oye, but it's not moving. Okay, I need to come. It's frozen, Miss Oye. Hold on, please. I don't know why it's not coming. Just give me a moment. Give me a moment. I really want us to see this video. That's all done, everyone. Apologies. So if you have a question why I fix this video, please just ask your question. If you have a question, go ahead and ask your question. Now we see now. Ah, uh, Kweku, W, like saying it has shot. But I you, it's a bit too. Move like saying it, Kubango, Kweku, W, move like saying. Are we able to see the screen? Did we see the screen? Yes. We're going to please. The floor is going to be open that we are going to discuss because from the video, I can see clearly that it's adult that is making the, the covering them. Maybe it's the uh, birthday party or something. So it's not only children's gathering. They have grown up there. And I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one that saw that there are grown ups there. You can see videos recording. So we're going to say, what do we think? Uh, I have one more video or two. I know time is fast, friends, but this is very important for us to check together. Oh. Just wait, please. Look at this, everyone. Cool. Those children are in school uniforms. And I'm sure it's one of the teachers that we tell them is a dancing competition time. Mommy told you, Mommy get ready to speak on this one. Let me show us one more. Y'all don't do drugs. Drugs is not good for you. Drugs is not good for you. 
I do it. I stress a lot. So, I like to smoke. Did we hear that? To get that stress off of me. My smoke kicks the stress off her. Drug is not good. It's stressed a lot. But the smoke kicks. What? Those statements. Yeah. It's obvious that that's what. Oh my God. The devil is the bastard. I'm going to stop it. Where are we going? What next for this generation? Okay, let me quickly show us something quickly. For somebody I can call an intentional parent who is observant, that gave the daughter a very hot slap. Okay, let's see this and we are going to have a discussion. Okay, that's so that we can see clearly. Oops, okay, let's go. <laughs> She's learning to become a she wanna become a pro. She's trying to set the camera and the mom slap from the back. All right, the floor is open. I don't want us to talk too much because I really want us to ask, ask questions, your concern. Whatever, maybe any question you have, or what you're concerned about, please go ahead and ask your question. Why we take question, I really want you to say something on the video. Say something on the videos. What are your opinions? Um, I think I was very shocked um, to see some of those things in the video. But you see, that is just a reflection, like you said, of, of our society. You know, um, people model what they see, and it starts from the homes. And you know, um, the, the, the home is the first society that we have. And for all of those children that you see there, they, they are coming from a home. You know, whether a good home or a bad home, they are coming from somewhere. You know, and um, what I know from experience is that no matter your situation, you can still bring out great children from there. If you are a single parent, if you are divorced, if you are not in a marriage where there's friendship and love, or even where the partners are not together in, in the fear of the Lord or in the knowledge of the Lord. Because I hear a lot of um, topics. I mean, I, I hear um, a lot of our mommies talking about, you know, the unity of the home. But what happens in a case where there's no unity in the home? You understand? And I always like to refer to this Bible past that talks when Paul was talking to Timothy, that I see the faith in you, the faith that was in your mother and your grandmother. You know, there was no mention of a father there. You understand? So I'm just trying to say that it's not where you are at. It is what you want to happen that you focus on. Mm. Children, are not mystics. You may have married a mystic, but the children that came in there, Bible says that they are the heritage of the Lord and they are a gift. So it is up to you as a parent, either it is a mother or a father or both combined. It is your duty and responsibility to make sure that your mystics are not passed on to these children. So it may be hard, it may be difficult, but you do have to set your mind on the manual, which for me is the Bible. We may have other religions and whatever, but you must have a manual. You know, if you buy an expensive phone, you want to read the manual, for instance, to be sure you can get all the features and benefits from there. But a lot of the time when we have our children, we don't take time to go to the manual to read about what God says about these children. How many times have we gone to our concordance to type in children and see everything that the Bible has to say about children? You know, and how much of this 
passages have we prayed over our children? You know, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes intentionality, like you said. But all of these things that we're seeing in those videos would not have happened if we had parents that had a sight in mind. And like mommy Pat said, that have values. They have imparted in their children what they believe are values. You know, values are different for everybody. You know, so they have imparted their own kind of values on their children. And like I always say, your children, you know, when you, when you, when you bring up your children, it's like you plant a seed. When they grow up into trees, you know the kind of, you know the kind of children you have. Bible says by their fruit, you will know them. You know, and you cannot plant orange and think you're going to get apple. You will get whatever it is that you sow. So these people in those videos, they have shown the kind of values they have and what they are imparting into their children and what they are training them. Like I said at the beginning, children are slates. They are open slates and anybody can write on it. Whose voice is it that is loudest in their hearts? Who is it that they are closest to and they have relationships with? Are they afraid of you, for instance, as a parent? Have you put so much fear into them that they cannot come to talk to you about things? You know, so they go outside to look for that. Have you shown your children where to get answers? Or is it from Google or from TikTok or from social media that they get answers? We have all the gurus in the world now, all over social media. But have you pointed them out to the right place where they can find the answers to their questions? Because they have questions that are burning in their minds. So if you don't take time to sort these things out and guide them in the right place, you will get those kind of things in those videos. Of course, a child that um, the, the little girl that was spoken and said this is a distressor for her. Her mom or her dad or somebody in her neighborhood must have said that several times that if you want to relieve yourself of stress, go take a cigarette. And the same child, if somebody had told her that you want to relieve yourself of stress, take a walk, a prayer walk, and talk to God. She will do the same thing. So it is just what we have sown inside these children that we will see coming out from them. And again, I want to stress that it doesn't have to be in, in, in the most cordial of relationships that you can bring out the best of children. Your children can turn out tops, even if you are in a hostile relationship, even if you're a single parent or divorced, you can bring out the best of children. Timothy is an example of such a child because there was no mention of his father like that in the Bible when Paul was talking about the faith that he saw his mother and his grandmother. So we really don't have any excuse not to work on our children. So the question we should ask ourselves, like Mommy Pat said, is that what are the values we have? What values do you have? What belief system do you have? What do you believe in? Is it cool for a child to do that kind of dance? Do you feel that there's no big deal in it? Or you feel that this is not something that is acceptable to a child of God? Who are you? It is who you are as a parent that will determine who your children will turn out to be. Yes, there will be negative influences outside, but trust me, when you have worked on your children and you are praying for them, they will remember the words that you have spoken to them. My daughter went to a university where um, they sell alcohol in juice boxes and you can pick it up there as you wish. And I mean, sex and all of these things are just like a norm and a normal thing, you know? So it depends on what you want. Clubbing and all of that were normal things. But it depends on the voices that you have heard and the way you have explained to your children. You have told them the why and the how. Not just the I'm telling you to do what I say you should do because I say so. You know, so when we take time to tell the children, I'm telling you to do this or not to do this because of X, Y, and Z reasons. They would reason because they are logical beings. And because they're emotional beings and because they are children of God. And when we're taking time to impart into them the word of God and the true ways in which they can do, it's not a matter of do as I do or do as I say, not do as I do. You know, when we do it, we show them this is how to do it. Training 
is showing somebody how to do something. Teaching is imparting knowledge on how to do something. So whatever it is, every single time as a parent, you are teaching and you are training your children. It can either be negative or positive every single day. Whoever is in your area of sphere or influence, you are imparting something, whether negative or positive. And the only thing I can encourage us, because we are adults, you know, and some people believe that this is how it should be. You can't change some people. But you can just admonish and talk to them that if you do not work on your children, I can guarantee you this, as long as heaven and earth remain, you will pray for that child 20 years from now. And you will pray for that child over and over and over again. But if you want to have peace and you want your children to call you blessed and you want to enjoy your old age, do the work now. Otherwise, you wait and time will tell. But for whatever we do, good or bad, all of us will repeat. Thank you so much, Mommy Tolu. That was awesome. You know, like, oh my God, goes good goosebumps all, all over me. That, that was awesome. And I believe as much as I'm being blessed, everyone here is getting blessed. I hope you have your pen with you. We don't just want to have a time like this and we just listen to it as usual and we go back to our old ways. That would be a wasted time and effort. So it's very important for us to learn and apply what we have learned. And there's something I do say every time, if in doubt, ask. The, one of the greatest mistakes a parent can do is to use your child as an experiment, trial by error. You're not sure if this is what you're doing is right. There should be somebody you trust. There should be, there should be a writer that you trust that you can pick the book up and read. Never ever try Try by error on your child. It's a big, big, big failure. Please, I believe you are learning. Thank you so much, Mommy Tolu. Mommy Tolu said something. She said, Miss Remy, I'll call you just now. I'll call you. Okay, okay Miss Remy, I'll call you. I can see your hand. Uh, time is fast spent. Uh, we also have a, quite a number of programs still lined up today. I just wish we can hold this time on because we have not spoken about, okay, in the world that we are living in, what we have seen, how can we guide our own children? And it's an important point. But I think I'm going to separate that part. Because if we start that one now, it's my, we might not be able to handle it because of time. How can we guide our children against all these things? Practically, what do we need to do? And there is a question on the chat uh, box. And also, please, if you cannot ask your question like this, please drop your question and I'm going to read it out. I have a question and I'm going to read it out quickly. And she said, not just teaching your child, tell them why. See, I remember one thing that was said to me over and again growing up in the church. So don't think uh, because you're, you're going to church, children department, everything there is right. No. It was said to me in the church because I was, the, I was that child that we always asked why. I want to understand everything. But even though I'm not in Mommy Stolu's generation, Mommy Pat or Mommy uh, Shola's generation, even then they will ask me, they will say, Mark, Bama, it means just do as we say. Don't ask why. And this gave me a lot of psychological issue. Just do it. You are not allowed to ask. I was that Abebelube child, the child that can ask questions, that can face grown up. You know, they will show me here and there. Sometimes I receive slap. And that is hence my passion for parenting. You understand? We cannot do the same to the children of this generation. Just do it. No, I made a video and I said, even your rules in the house should be made with your children. Sit down, discuss, let them say their opinion and give them reasons why we don't do this. Not because you are a pastor, not because you are a deacon, not because you are a deaconess or a child. Let them understand why and the danger therein. And that is the value one moment you said. As somebody said in the question said, uh, considering the IQ of children differs, what are the appropriate age to start set education overall. Miss Remy, before this question is answered, please go ahead and say what you want to say, Miss Remy. Go ahead, go ahead, Miss Remy. Okay. Uh, yes. Hello, everyone. Thank you for letting me join in this uh, lovely, wonderful mummies. And I saw some daddies also. Actually, I just want to share about those, uh, the little girl who's in the car uh, putting the ca uh, camera, doing the TikTok. So actually, I, I, uh, who to blame? Of course, it's an 
it's the adult, right? So those children are great imitators. So give them great, uh, something, something great to imitate. They are so miraculous. Those children are great. So parents are the first teachers, right? So teach them with all your hearts. Express the love a lot. At, but those positive things only. I, I think for me, as an auntie, I'm a, I'm a, a auntie only, sorry. <laughs> so I know... Uh, I, I consider myself as a parent, but uh, those, uh, I just wanted to say only that thing. Children are great imitators, so give them something great to imitate. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Remy. Miss yeah. Remy is an amazing LEA teacher. <laughs> so she understood what she's saying, and when she says something, she said, parents are children's first teacher. I was an LEA teacher, and I understand what she's saying. You know, some parents will come to you. Uh, when are you going to start training my children potty training? You know my answers to them? I'll tell them, let me know when you're ready because it's not even my job. See, most of the time, children are already ready for potty training, but parents are the lazy ones because it takes time and effort to train your child, to potty train your child. So they are coming back to you as teacher. When are you going to start training my children? Uh, hello, we are our children's first teacher. We can finish this point today. I hope we don't have any other questions. Awesome. Uh, okay. Very good. Captain, okay. 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 Any other question before I tell Mommy Shola uh, to say something? I hope. Oh, I think my oh, 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 my computer is not plugged. Oh. The pain is unbearable. <laughs> not even the words is coming. Not even the This is Don't I understand how you feel, my friend? Why do you understand how you feel? But I assure you, you only get better. Okay. As a matter of fact, I spoke to Richard. So that's your confiscated goods or exchange. Say you have to pay a lot of money before. Function is this one. We just said that they're demanding six million naira. They don't settle that at all. Where am I supposed to get that kind of money from? This point, I know it too well that I sold my car to settle my mother's hospital bill and every other expenses. How do I do this? Ah, oh my God, I've been muted. Sorry, everyone. Apologies. Apologies. I've just been saying if Mommy Shola was going to say something. I thought she's busy. That's why she didn't respond. I didn't know that I'm muted. I said I'm privileged also to have one of my mamas here. Mami Aluko from Sweden. I know she's busy. She's at work at the moment. I would have given her a few minutes to talk to us. So do we have any other question or contribution, please? Question, contribution. Question, contribution. Mommy Pat, would you like to say anything on the video before we, we run off? <laughs> yeah, how to send our children or to let them know who they are. I don't know what to believe, but for me, to let them know who they are in Christ. When you are in the midst of these things, what can carry them? What can guide them? So in depth, I know Mommy Pat, uh, Mommy Pat, Mommy Shola, and Mommy Tolu said it, but I want us to say those as a topic. As a separate form. And also one question that I asked also about how early, how when can we start sex education? Mommy, Mommy Shola can take that because, you know, the uh, IQ of children differs. How early do you think it's early for us to start sex education? Briefly, Mommy Shola, can you talk about that? How early we can start? Um, thank you, Oye. How early we can start? Um, how early can we start um, sex education? As, as early as the child begins to identify the parts of the body, which is also at the early stage. But the difference is that um, is in the teaching pattern. For the very um, tender ones who already know that this is my head, this is my breast, this is this and that, what you can only start with by teaching them is that you have, for the female, for the male, you let them know what is called their private part. 
And then you just give them rules. When I mean rules, you let them know that um, these parts are not to be touched by anybody. They are not to be touched by anybody. They are not um, to expose them to people. They should not let people touch them. It doesn't matter if it's an uncle, they are auntie, they are these, they are that. You just have to let them know. Because if we say that they are too young to understand, the truth is that such age are being molested now. Sometimes in the past, we've had cases of um, less than one year old being molested by an elderly man. Thank God it was sorted out. The man uh, was arrested and all of that, but he was already joined. So as soon as our children begin to understand, they can identify the parts of the body. Let them know that eyes is for seeing, mouth is for talking, nose is for breathing, and then your hands is for doing good things for God, for yourself, for your family members, for your friends. And then you see this particular area is called private part and is meant to be properly covered. And that is when we ought to even teach them how to protect it. So for parents who are still doing, um, who are not careful about the choice of wardrobe, the choice of clothes they no, buy sure. for their children, this is also part of it. You know, when we see children in skimpy things now, we are wondering, uh, how can this child wear this? How can this child wear bomb shorts? How can this child wear something very revealing? But the child didn't go, didn't buy it. It's the parents that went to buy it. Apparently, that's how the parents, that's how the mother or the father wants to nurture the child. And of course, every child, every human being, not even children alone now, every human being is a product of nature and nurture. The child was given birth to in a, in, a, in a particular and a certain natural way. But it's our duty to nurture these children in the right pattern and in the way of the Lord. Like the Bible says, train up a child in the way you go. There is a way that child is supposed to go that we should nurture that child to go. But then when we begin to make, even as parents, when you begin to make wrong choices yourself, wrong choice of clothing, wrong choice of um, school, wrong choice of even your own association. You have friends, like that video we saw, the girl who said smoking is this and all that, that girl must have seen somebody. Definitely. Somebody close, not just somebody far, somebody close that has been able to convince her enough that when you want to um, release that stress, you want to rebuild, you want to relieve yourself, you just go smoking, you just, what, even though you don't want to do drugs, drugs are hard, but you can, you can smoke to suppress it. And then those other ones too as well, especially that dance, oh my God. It's annoying to know that it's even parent, it's adults rather, because we can't say if it's a parent, it's adults that is there positioning herself foolishly to be those so sort of Mom Shola, did you see those ones in the uniform? Because that is school environment. Parents are not aware about that. So they the can ones, say the ones in the uniform. You know, last week I did I did a series on um who is to instill moral uh uh what is it called now? moral formation in children. Is it the educators who is responsible? Is it the parents, is it the educators? Because we've come to discover that these things, it goes round because parents in some, in some levels, especially here in Nigeria now, parents would rather care about the money they pay the school and they would rather flaunt it to the face of the teacher that if it is not the money I'm paying, how will you be able to get your salary? Then the teacher, um, instilling some moral values into their children. Parents, some parents will literally go to school and go and fight a teacher in the presence of their child. Why? Because their child came home and says, me so, 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 so punished me. Some won't even ask, what did you do? What happened? Some won't get to have a good conversation with the teacher. But they will go to school and say, did I give you pain to be flogging my child and all of that? They go to school and go and make trouble. And like I say to teachers, I tell them, we, as parents, we pay school fees, but please, we did not buy your punishment. 
if you're a teacher on this platform, ensure that even though your salary is at stake, even though your job is at stake, even though the, the school owner doesn't want to lose that family, doesn't want to lose that child, but ensure that you are passing moral, you are forming moral in, in, in those children that are under your care within those hours that they are under your care. Some children would come home, will come from their homes with good morals, but some don't even have the privilege. They don't have a parent who is, who is, who is um, they don't have any parent who, who has given them time, who has dedicated time to them, who, who is their friend, who has relationship with them to teach them one thing or the other. So we concluded last week, we concluded that moral formation begins from home, but then teachers too continues with the duty. They continue with the duty. Also, they continue Shana. with the duty. Yes, ma'am. So sex, edu it, go it ahead, starts, go sex education on. starts as early as possible, as early as you can, as early as your child can understand that this is this. Do you know that some children, at their, at their, when they are less than one, those times that they still use diapers, We've had experiences, I've, I've had to, to um, help or to talk to some parents who had an experience of uh, house help, you know, in the course of changing, changing babies' diapers. They will take their time to play with the private part of the child. Play, 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 that the child will grow, the child was growing up to get used to touching himself, touching his penis, touching himself, massaging himself so well that even in class, the child will sit down, suck in his early class, suck his tongue, oh my God, suck and then put his hand deep into the school knicker and be touching and be massaging. And you'll be, you'll be wondering, the teachers were like, okay, where did this child get this thing from? It started from the maid who was changing diaper for this little child. And this same maid would all in the name of I'm petting this child to stop crying. We put, we place the child on our, on our bus and make the child caress her. Things are happening. Parents need to wake up. Sincerely. They need to wake up. They need to wake up. It is not when we see it on social media that we now start making noise and start crying and start reacting and start writing. Do you know that most parents who wrote things about that girl in that school in Nigeria, that had issues in uh, that has, um, sex, sex issues in yeah. uh, Dubai. Mm. Most parents who were writing, I told them, I said, you see, everybody's reacting. Go back home and back, check yourself, check your children. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, a lot of parents now discovered that their teenagers are on some site with different names. And then they are grabbing all the gadgets they gave them to use as pleasure. What is your child who has not done, who has not completed college, who has not completed secondary school, doing with iPhone for crying out loud. The child is not making money. The child is not influencing anybody positively. The child is not taking Bible morals and all of that to, oh my God, are the mates even there? The gadgets that you, they give them that they are not censoring, they are not what they are not guiding them. They have it to themselves free of charge. What was the money in the account? And whose account was used? Awesome, yeah. Michela. It's somebody oh speaking. So, okay. Go ahead. I know time is fast spent. I wish I yes. wish can just all We just time. need to wake up. This, this thing, eh, you see what you've done for us today is a wake up call. This meeting is a wake up call. From the teachers to everybody on the platform, let's wake up to our duty. Let's wake let's up. Wake up. Let's wake up to our duty. Society is not teaching, is not revealing the right things, right values to our children. As we are playing our part at home, let's be on top of our game. At least, let's be a step ahead of this children. At least, like I used to say, let's be a, at least a step ahead. Some parents can afford the gadget, but they don't even know how the gadgets work. They are still analog parents. They don't, they don't know how to, how, to, how, to, how to safeguard the children on the system that they have used their money to buy for the child. And then they're not, they're not checking. What are you doing? They, they, there's no limit time. The children sleep with the gadgets in their rooms. You know, I, I'm, I'm just going to say this. You know, when that issue of uh, that girl came up some weeks, like two weeks ago, a lot of parents um, started collecting, they, they started discovering, actually teenagers started discovering that 
there are teenagers on, on those sites and all that. Then they started reacting instead of re responding. They started mm. collecting the gadgets, bring your phone. So they, were, uh, they were collecting phone and all that. And I told some of them that I got to, that I got to talk with me. I said, the issue is not about you collecting that phone now. You really need to know how far your child has gone. You need to know uh, his or her level of understanding what he or she has imbibed. And then you need to start doing some, some spiritual cleansing and wiping off <laughs> of those negative values. Thank you so much, Mama so, And I think welcome call. Thank you so much. Time is fast spent because we really have yeah. to finish up and uh, run off because of time. See, your point also link up with mom, mommy, Tolu said, and she said, tell them why. See, I've seen a lot of people writing, write out. Everybody, all of a sudden, when something happened in Nigeria, if it's about marriage, everybody, all of a sudden, become everybody a, becomes marriage counselor. <laughs> something happened, everybody become all of a sudden, they have ministry in parenting. See, you have said it all. People now discovering their teenagers having gadgets and on social media and taking it off. The phone is not a problem. It's not a problem. It's going back to the foundation. Your relationship with your child, how far you have guided your child on the right path of what you believe. Mm -hmm. See, That's this right, is where I'm, I'm patterned. I, my children don't have phone. Of course, they are still six years. I don't know when I'm going to get them phone, but I'm training them in case you find yourself in this midst. Mm -hmm. If you see this, it's not right. This is what mm -hmm. to be done. Mm -hmm. If you don't give them phone and you think you are doing your positive parenting, they are friends that will sneak phone to the class and everything. They will show them. So that's one to bring enmity between you and them. Mommy is wicked. So we have to ensure sensitivity and be careful. Are you raising a child because of what you want? Is this because of your self-ego? Things are mixed up these days. Parents are doing their parenting because they want to show off to their friends. My child is in science class. My child is going to be a doctor. Is it all about that in your parenting? Or you want to raise an amazing child? Talking about sex education, Mommy Shala, Mommy Shala have said it all. But for me, sex education starts from day one. Just like parenting starts from the womb. It comes to the time, see, your little one week old, if you have a boy of two years, you should train your boy of two years that you're having a little sister of one week old or one day old to excuse that baby. When I say these things, people think, oh, yeah, it's crazy. You are just SS. I said something in my last video last week. I said, if people have not called you SS, you have not started in your parenting. If people don't think like, ah, I own is too much. That's why you can't be everybody's friend. Thank God for my mamas that I have here, Miss Tolu, Miss uh, me, uh, Mommy Pat, and everybody. I know them. They are not everybody. They don't even have friends. And that is what it takes. You can't be everybody's friend. I look straight. Don't be my friend if it's not going to work. My parenting first. Your two years should be able to excuse your one-day-old baby. Get used to it. Your one-month-old baby should not be dressing. It, 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 it goes a long way. You should not be washing your three-year-old baby private parts. I understand because at the beginning I felt, oh, my daughter is not doing it right. That place will not be clean. You know, sometimes I still want to do it when she was four. It should not be clean. But I said, no, this is not right. Clean it by yourself. Scrooby dooby. I look for a lot of languages and I tell her this is from mommy. You can't see it in the dictionary. And she understood. And I also tell her, washing is not playing with it. You teach them not to be comfortable with it. Just make sure that the place is neat and everything. You don't go there and turn it to toy. It is not a toy. These are the things that are very, very important. Today, I'm privileged to have uh, Mr. Kikumi here, Mamshola. Time is gone. My timekeeper is telling me, roll it, roll it, roll it. We are going to finish now. And I know we have not spoken about how to help our children, though we've spoken about it, but as a, as a, as a, as a topic. And I think I'm going to continue that to next week. Next week, by the grace of God, I will continue that again. And I believe if I call on Mommy Shola, Mommy Pat, Mommy Tolu, again, I am blessed. They are going to honor me and they're going to be here. I'm privileged to have uh, Mr. Kikumi. Mr. Kikumi is my ogre at the top. A very, very ogre at the top. A social worker in Nigeria. A very important person in, the, in, the, in this point of talking about parenting, children, safeguarding children, family protection. He's right here. Uh, Mr. Kikumi, I can cite you there, sir. If you don't mind, would you like to sort of say one thing before we finish? Mr. Kikumi, I can cite you here. Boss. I just...
I just want to encourage us, uh, Mommy Shola, well done, Ma. Uh, well done, Mommy. Uri. And um, uh, if, if the right thing is not loud, the wrong thing might become popular. So we're doing a good work. And like uh, Pastor Shola said it, we just need to make ourselves very loud. Thank you. Oh, much, Mr. Kikumi. God bless you. That's a big point. If everything we have said comes to that point, if the right thing is not loud, the wrong thing will become popular. See, mommy, mommy, shola, mommy, tolu, mommy, pat, Mr. Kikumi. Sometimes this is not what I want to do, but I believe God said do, and I'm doing. I said it last week in my live video. I said when God asked me to do parenting essential, I said to God, wait, Baba, I will do it, but let me have children because what I'm saying will not make sense. They will say it's easier said than done. Because already people are telling me we shall see when you have children. I mentioned that last week. Also, when I started, some people are really coming because they want to encourage me. This program that I'm doing right now, I said to myself, I'm not going to tell people one-on-one -on -one like my friend, please be there. No. Parenting now, we get to the point of if you want to be intentional, be here. So it's becoming like, oh, yes, yeah, becoming aggressive. Because if you get to a point that bringing mommy and all my mommy is coming to you might cost us money. Yes, this is what I live for now. So people are becoming like, let's go and encourage her. No, you are not here to encourage me. You are here to be blessed. See, Mom Shola, I think we have been linear sometimes. I'm telling you, you understand what I'm saying. Uh, let's just attend. We, I'm going to come for you. You are not coming for me. If you are intentional in your parent, it is up to you. My children are my children. Your children are your children. What do you want to raise? I don't want to talk too much. I've said I'm not going to talk too much. Let the writing be popular. <laughs> The, the wrong things will be silenced and we can all do it together because hand in hand together we can stand. If you do your part, I do my part. We, in, we impart other people around us. Maybe the world can be a better place. Maybe it can be a better place. But in the case that the world continue like this, what are we going to do? How do we safeguard our own children and our intentionality? I want to say thank you to everyone for coming, for joining me today. Just like I've said, you're not coming for me. At the same time, I appreciate your coming. It means a lot to me that this little girl is going to give a shout out. Please come, let's talk together. And you are here. It's amazing. And I am very, very grateful. Today, I'm privileged to have Mr. Kikumi here. I have Mommy Tolu here. I have Mommy Shola. I have Mommy Pat. I have Mrs. Aluko from Sweden. I think she stepped out. She's also an intentional parent. I believe she's at work. She, she left, I think. All right. See, it, it's a great privilege and honor for everyone to be together. So I want to just say thank you, mommies. Thank you, Mr. Kikomi. Thank you for saying yes to me. Thank you for giving me strength and encouragement. Thank you for giving me your shoulders to lean on, to give me reassurance that you're doing the right thing. I'm very, very grateful. I am not counting or taking your coming as, as, as a privilege. You know, I'd be blessed. It's not because of my rights. Like I'm entitled to your coming. No, but I count it as a very, very, very big, great, 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 great privilege. And I'm honored and I'm blessed. Thank you so much for coming. I believe we don't have any other question before we call it a day. I just want to give a shout out. My sisters are here. Uh, my childhood friend is here. The one and only friend that I know of her in my life, even though she doesn't know it. She think, ah, I lost my friend. No, I never have any other friend. This person is like my twinning. We grew up together, went to secondary school together. And uh, she's right here, Mrs. Oluka. She's right there. Your camera is off. I have my university friend. I saw you. Uh, are you, where are you? You were there, right there before. I don't know which fate. I don't think, I don't maybe that is uh, Mommy Jed. Thank you for joining, Sister Dorcas. Ireti, I cite you here. Mrs. Ojomo is here. These are my university friends. I am grateful for having you today, Mrs. Ojomo. God bless you. God bless you. Mrs. Olukon, I can't see your face. Uh -huh. There you go, the one in glasses. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today, my darling friend. God bless you. Who else do we have here? Uh, my brother is here. Diki Nomo, God bless you. Adaora. Thank you for joining. I don't mean to murder your name. Ola Dejo. Thank you for joining. Blessing Wale. Thank you for joining. Uh, Ololade, thank you for joining. Glory, thank you for joining. I believe that's Mrs. Pasca. Uh, Aru Emo, Faith, thank you for joining. Uh, everyone, thank you for joining. Mrs. Shomade, I just cite you now. Thank you for joining, my darling, darling little sister. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, everyone. Do we have any other question before we call it a day?
Thank you so much, everybody. See, we are going to pray. We didn't pray before we start. So I'm saying goodbye to everyone who is not a Christian because we are going to pray in a Christian way. So if you are not a Christian, you can, I swear, take your leave now. God bless you. Thank you for joining. We appreciate you. But whatever you believe, teach your children. If you are not a Christian, please, you can take your leave. We don't want to offend you. We really need to pray. Even if it's two minutes, we really need to pray for our children because by by strength, shall normal prevail. We cannot, we cannot, see, to be to be positive parent, we have to be spiritually alert. Mommy Shala said something, said, sometimes I tell God, what is happening to my children? If we are spiritually alert, Holy Spirit will whisper to us, check this, check this. Your child is going to meet somebody, a bad friend. Please warn the child. And that is why it's very important for us also to lead, to lead our children in the way of the Lord. Let them have personal relationship to, with God. See, how do you, how does it feel for my six years old to be telling me, mommy, God said this to me. I feel good when I hear them saying these things. I've heard, this is not a joke. My children have said something to me, black and white. I saw this, I saw this. When you, that thing is going to happen, same color, same, same thing. How does it feel? So let them know God for themselves, not because mommy has passion, but because they are children of God. So we are going to be praying shortly. Any children? I know we have another program and mommy, mommy Pat also is having another program. Even before then, there's a program before then. So thank you so much, everybody. We are going to pray. Uh, I'm going to call Mommy Shala. Please, you're going to pray for our children. That God should lead them in the way of the Lord. That Lord should help them. Those things that we cannot see. Holy Spirit should help us see beyond our physical eyes. And their mm. personal relationship with God should be strengthened. If we are not there, when the Holy Spirit is with them, they'll be convinced, this is not right. I can't do this. I am different. I do tell my children, both biological and non-biological, I said, if everybody in your class is not listening, you are not allowed to do the same. Because you are different. Mm. You have been consecrated. See, this is the secret. People ask me, how do you talk to your children? From day one, I talk to them like an adult, even though age appropriate. But I don't use that, that sense here, the sentiment of children. No, that's why critical thinking is important. I don't want to talk too much time is gone. Mamishala, please go ahead and pray. All right, shall we pray? Father, we thank you for today. We give you praise. We bless your holy name. We glorify you. We thank you for the vision, guys parenting essentials thank you for giving us this platform to be able to gather to learn of you to learn from one another father we bless your holy name be glorified in the name of jesus our father we come to you and commit our children into your hands we ask in the name of jesus that our children will be taught by you and great shall be their peace in the name of jesus we ask oh god that your shalom nothing missing nothing broken will continually abide with our children in in the name of Jesus, uh, we speak light and life unto our children. Uh. We pray, oh God, that our children we have access to your mind. We ask, oh God, that our children we have access to the secrets of life. We ask, oh God, that our children we have access to the voice of God that will bring about a holy lifestyle living for them in the name of Jesus, that they will not miss it, that they will stand upon their watch and be obedient to your rules and your ways and your pattern in the name of Jesus. And we pray for ourselves, oh God, our spirit. We pray for strength. We pray for divine knowledge and understanding that you will open up our eyes of understanding and our heart of understanding to those patterns, to those ways that we should train these children, these precious gifts you have given us in the name of Jesus. And we pray for the world at large. We ask in the name of Jesus, Christ, uh, that devil remove your hand uh, over the lives of children in the name of Jesus, uh, most especially our teenagers uh, and our young ones, oh God, uh, we pray, oh ye devil, remove your hand from them uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we cast everything that you have infused into the world system, uh, we cast it away in the name of Jesus. Uh, we cover this generation with the blood of Jesus.
Jesus. We cover the generation Y, the generation Z. We cover them the blood of Jesus. We ask in the name of Jesus that this one, sir, they will do the Lord's will. Amen. In the name of Jesus. This one's heart, paradventure, there's a parent on this platform that is having a challenge with a particular child. We ask for wisdom to be upon your heart. We ask that the heart, the heart of that child is arrested by the Holy Spirit. We ask, so God, that God takes over your home and that child, that that child turns back into the right path Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we ask Amen. that these our children Amen. will not lose them. Amen. We will not lose them. We will Amen. not lose them. We will Amen. not lose them. Amen. And here by your God, do you do we not lose them? They Amen. shall be part of your kingdom Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, Jesus. Because your peace all Hallelujah. about our children. Hallelujah. They are shielded, they are protected, they are defended, Amen. they are helped. Amen. They are graced to live a holy life. Yes, Lord. We thank you, everlasting thank Father. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' yes. mighty name we are praying. Amen. 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 I am tempted to shout hallelujah. I know we are not in church. Let's shout hallelujah. Glory. Thank you so, so, so much. I feel like coming to your house and just giving you a cordial. Thank you. Thank you, my mommy. Thank you so much. God bless you. Please, if you don't mind, just open your camera and just shout hello. If you are blessed, just go to the chat and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Just open your camera if you don't mind. God bless you. Thank I'm you. I'm blessed to be here, Mommy. Mommy Tolu, thanks. I am blessed. Mommy Pat, thank you. Mommy Pat, God bless you. I'm I know you're very God bless you, man. God bless you. Mommy Shola, God bless you. Sister Jane, God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Sister Bella, I know you are there. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Daphne, God bless you. Till next time. Mrs. Pascal, God bless you. Who else is there? Thank you. Mommy Pat, thank you. Mommy Pat, God bless you. Thank 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 you. Mm. Sorry, I don't mean to murder your name. I can't see that face properly, but thank you for joining mm -hmm. us. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, you. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> me. Lola, thank you. 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 And it must be carried jealously, regardless of who. You. Don't sacrifice your children on the altar of friendship. Yeah. Don't be a selfish parent. The Lord bless us. See you again next time. Mommy Shola, Mommy Pat. Thank you. See Mommy you Tolu, later. God bless you. 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 I love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Love me. God you bless you. I'm going to be ending the meeting now. God bless you. Stay blessed, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Yes, stay safe. Bye. Joining. God bless you. Adefumi, Layo, thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you for joining. God bless you so much. I appreciate you. God bless you too.